chemistry is very abstract, and the world of analytical chemistry is, is it's abstract as well. You do an analysis for blood alcohol, and you determine the blood alcohol to be 0 0.128. I mean, first of all, is is it really alcohol we're looking at? I mean, you can't really see it and touch it. I mean, and then the second question is, is it really 0.128 or is it, you know, 2000 or something? I mean, how do you know? Chemists run substances which we call controls alongside the regular samples. A control is something that we know about, but is outside of the box of the analysis. So it's something that's completely independent. And again, there's two questions. The qualitative question is, is this what we think it is? And then the quantitative question is, do we have as much as we think we have? Okay, an example of a control might be, let's call him Mike. Mike gets up in the morning, 7 o'clock. By 8 o'clock, he's drank three beers. At 9 o'clock, exactly, a sample of blood is drawn, and Mike's blood becomes the control for that day. And this happens every day. This is a little silly, I know, but bear with me here. Another example would be, we open a can of beer, we dilute the beer 50x, so 50 times, and we run it through our analysis. When we get done with the analysis, we get a number. We take that number and we multiply it by the same 50 to get back where we started from, and we see if the number matches up with the beer. Like, and, and there's problems with this. This is a very good analysis for qualitative, is this really what we think it is? Is this, we're doing an analysis for alcohol. Are we really doing an analysis for alcohol? Well, you know, if it matches Mike's analysis and if it matches the beer's analysis, we can be pretty sure that on that level we're doing, we're doing what we think we should be doing. Mike's not going to metabolize the beer the same every day. Beer is basically a natural product and it doesn't, it doesn't have the same composition every time. We look at the beer bottle and the beer bottle says 6%. 6%, that's one significant figure, that tells us it might be 7. That tells us it might be 5. It might even be 4. We don't know how much is in it. On a qualitative level, we did okay. On a quantitative level, this is pretty useless. The way this is actually done in real life is we go to the outside and we find a control that is something independent. The control might be a bottle. The bottle says ethanol, analytical grade, and then turn it over on the back and it says guaranteed 99.999% ethanol. We make up a standard. It's essentially a standard from this bottle and we call it a control and we run this as an independent verification of the quantitation of our report. Running controls in chemistry is not something that's added on. It's not like extra credit. It's not like in some ways it's the very substance of the analysis is the controls. It's not something that's extra. Like controls are probably run on average every 10, every 10 samples. Something like that. It's not an extra credit sort of thing. Let's assume that the calibration curve is in order. The analyst sets up the run. The run consists of a zero blank, a low control, and a high control, and then the samples. And then after 10 samples, another set of controls is run. The criteria for the controls are typically set by government institutions. Analytical chemistry almost always has a liability associated with it, a health um, significance, environmental science significance. Much of the analysis done, most of the analysis is probably done in a medical community. So lives are at stake, so it's regulated. So the controls have to be within a certain value. The controls being within a certain value tells the doctor that the, that the analysis is within certain specifications that he, that he knows that he can live with. Analysis produces errors. We run controls to make sure that the errors are not jeopardizing the objectives of the analysis. But perhaps further than that, we can do a statistical analysis 
on the control values and learn things about our analysis. The theme of this is really more statistics than it is chemistry. Let's look at this uh, distribution graph of the weight of 15-year-old boys. The boys weigh an average of 128 pounds. The standard deviation is 15 pounds. So as a, as a description of a group of numbers, the average is 128 and the standard deviation is 15. We know that the boys have different weights. We put them in a, in a distribution curve and we find out that they do in fact have different weights. Let's turn around and look at the distribution curve of control values. I want to I want to bring this down really low so we get a real good look at it. Okay, so we have the distribution curve of the control values. So that, for example, 149.0, they got 17 times. 150.0, they got 19 times. 152.0, they got 7 times. So this is a distribution of how many times did they get the various values. And notice how the scale is... 148, 149, 150, 151. As a statistics problem, as an exercise in dealing with numbers, this is a much more interesting statistics problem because these numbers are supposed to be the same. You know, it's not like, well, you know, the, the weights of the boys are, well, they weigh differently, and we do a distribution curve, and we find out they, in fact, are different weights. These numbers are supposed to be the same. And I think that, I think it makes, it, it gives real teeth to them to it as a statistics problem. These numbers are supposed to be the same. We deal in chemistry with errors all the time. Statistical analysis of the control values gives us a handle on what those errors actually are. That's kind of the nuts and bolts of it, is if we do statistics on the control values, we can find out a lot of interesting things, and we can find out very, very um, precisely what the errors are. And I think that by taking this approach, we can dispel some of the fears of the errors. Analysis produces errors, but if we look at those errors with statistical tools, we can greatly reduce the fear about errors, and we can, we can discover very clearly, very mathematically precisely, that we can accomplish what it is we're trying to do, do meaningful work, in spite of the errors.